see good things about it. I do. I, I well, do not regret a moment. Wish it could have gone the other way, yes. but absolutely. And against a great champion, so. One of the classic matches here at the Australian Marina. Open. 7 5, Chana went Sabalenka down. Sabalenka has lost all of her semi finals at majors 6 4 in the third. She'll be hoping that history doesn't predict her future. Love 50. Start, start this from Lynette, settling nicely. Well, you think about the matchups that these two have had in the past, and they were pretty one sided in Sabalenka's favor, but it's been a couple of years or so since they last played, and Lynette is playing at a different level. So, how does Sabalenka handle that, kind of adjust to the form of her opponent on this occasion? Laura Robson's courtside, I think. Laura, are you, uh, are you there? I am indeed. Are you wrapped up? I'm wrapped up. I've got a towel over my legs, woolly jumper on. It is getting chilly. I mean, in comparison, I know we're not back in England, but for Australia, this feels pretty cold. And that's a bit of a yeah. cold start yeah. for Sabalenka as well. Only lost uh, five times coming into this semi-final. That's the sixth time already. And the one thing you want to do in your first ever major semi-final is get some games on the board early, and she's done a nice job of that. And the other thing, Sam, that she's done a very good job of it, particularly against Pushkova, not renowned as a great server, I would say, but the accuracy at times this tournament has been magnificent. Yeah, she doesn't have the most powerful serve in the world by any means, but she can really place it to those corners. And you can see she hasn't use that body serve too much. She's really been trying to spread her opponent out wide or stretching down the tee, perhaps using that back behind play a little bit when she goes tee. But yeah, it's really important for her to make a really high first serve percentage. It won't be the fastest, but it'll be high and hopefully be able to avoid Sabalenka attacking her second serve. Magda Linette Love it. And one of the most surprising stats coming into this semi-final was actually Nanette's second serve percentage of points one, 63%. I asked the gig guys uh, what the best record that they had coming in here, and they've been doing records since 2002, and it is the best that anyone has ever had coming into a semi-final. 63%. The next best was Kenan uh, Barty last year at 59%. And then you go back to Martina Hingis at 58% back in 2002. It's been remarkable how she's been able to protect her second serve. When you also think about the improvement that she's made from last year to this fortnight. So you had that number, maybe around 48% or so yep. of second serve points won in 2022. That is a big raise in, in level, rise in level. Well, this has been again just an encouraging start getting Sabalenka on the move so important to do
Vote. What Sabalenka is going to try and look to do on that second serve fails to hit the target. Lynette leads two games to look. Changing rackets doesn't always help players out. It's helped Tommy Paul this tournament, of course. He's got about 10Ks extra for Lynette. She's, uh, that's the one big area that it has helped her on her first serve. As you can see, this AO series last year, she was serving at 149Ks here in 2023. That's a 9Ks up for her as well. A little extra pace out of the frame. Did you guys play around with your rackets a lot? I didn't play around with it. I did have to switch at one point, and it was hard. It was hard to find something that felt as good. And you said? I, I've actually tinkered more of my rackets in the last few years than ever before. <laughs> Now I just play with anything. <laughs> Is it free? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> oh. Not only changing frames, you can also tinker a lot with your strings, the, the patterns of your strings, the tensions. There's so many ways you can adju adjust your racket now for more power, more control, more spin. You've just got to be willing and open to try. Exchange she wants to get into, then that isn't it? She's got more pace on her backhand than Sabalenka. Doesn't really want to get into a forehand to forehand exchange too often, but she'll take that. Well, we talked about Lynette needing to settle in as quickly as possible, get on the board, but it's Sabalenka that needs this game to just steady herself a bit. She's talked this tournament about being calmer on the court in the bigger moments, and that's helped her out. She doesn't look all that calm right now. Did you get that, Laura? 40, 40. Just about. I'm half expecting her to change her racket because she's usually so quick if the ball's not coming off nicely to change to a different tension. She did so against Vekic the other day. Mid-game, not a problem for her. She, she does it sometimes between first and second serves. Sabalenka on the scoreboard finally. Lynette, though, with the break 2 1 in this opening set of the Lynette second semi final here. Seats quickly, please, behind the players. Thank you. Fifteen. 
to Attila. Not looking particularly fluid at the moment. That is a big swing on that forehand side at times for Sabalenka to get everything working in unison. Great depth for the net. Well, it's been so impressive the way Lynette has stayed really calm when she's been pushed to the edges of the court. It happened against Pliskova again in these early stages, trusting her shots. Four, two, 15. Sabalenka wants to get into a little bit more, a little better margin. And when there's a little more height over the net, you can get more depth without hitting it as big. Anton Dubrov looking after Sabalenka. Doesn't make too many errors off that particular wing. Well, it's a shot that does produce a lot of winners for Sabalenka, not as many as her forehand. It's a little bit more of an uneven attack coming from Sabalenka compared to Lynette. Turnaround game for Sabalenka. Was in danger of going down 3 1 pretty swiftly, two apiece. Two games on. You wonder if Lynette will adjust a little bit of her strategy getting to this match. The backhand down the line has been the real weapon, but that goes into Sabalenka's forehand. So you can see her playing the backhand more right now, and this is the reason why that forehand from Sabalenka is lethal. China just highlighted coming to the fore there for the net. Laura, obviously the conditions you just said are cold. I mean, are they significantly colder than it's been at any other stage? Sabalenka's lost about 10 Ks on her first serve so far tonight. Yeah, I think it's definitely playing a part. And we just heard Rebecca in talk about it as well, how much lighter she felt the balls were in, in these cold conditions at night and how that plays a part off the speed of the racket. Fold. Yeah. 
it feels like the change is the biggest part going from day to night having to find that rhythm all over again and then you play someone like Vekic who hits such a big ball changing up to Lynette who's got different strengths and weaknesses it just feels like she's taking plenty of time to adjust here Sabalenka from Savalenka. She was not backing down well, at any right. moment during that point, trying to run Lynette side to side. Finally gets a shorter ball and can rip that forehand. A good weapon for Sabalenka, the body serve. She usually goes to one corner or the other. That body serve so effective when it's coming at that pace. That is a couple yeah, of big Sabalenka. games on the bounce there for Sabalenka and a good, solid, confident look over. To that was a lot more confident serving game there. Big first serves, big hitting from the baseline. This is the, more of the Sabalenka we've seen all tournament now. Yeah, and I think it's, it's been a shift for Sabalenka because, again, she's played Lynette in the past. This is a different player, and so it, I think it always takes a little adjustment, especially when you're the player that's expected to win and You've got this idea in your head of how you want to play, and you get out there and you've got to adjust. So nice job these last three Six games, three in a row. So let us know Time. 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 Savalenka just walking over to where her box is. They'll be feeling a little bit more relaxed about life right now. has the lead for the first time. Lovely team. That's been a serve that's been working beautifully for Lynette. That wide serve, it's a sharp angle. She took a little bit off to get more angle, and Sabalinka just destroyed it. Shot there of soaking up the pressure, and well, wow, it feels personal at times with Sabalenka in a tennis ball, doesn't it? She loves to feed off that pace, too. I think this that actual slice back end there could be an important shot for Lynette as this match goes on. Sometimes 
having to create your own pace is a lot harder than feeding off it. Fold. Yeah. It's so true. I was digging through some data for tomorrow's match with Hashinov and Sitsipas. You look at Karen's win loss record against one handers recently. He's won two out of his last 15 matches against one handers and against Berrettini. He hasn't picked up a, a set in four meetings. And they're, they're players that play with the slice, the off pace to him. Yeah. It almost seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? You think slower ball, big hitter, they're going to love it. For sure, but it can obviously the spinning backwards, it can stay lower, Three. you can drop it shorter, Games you could hit it deeper, you can mix in a disguise with a drop shot. Gives you really a good chance to have that variety in your game. And with big hitters, sometimes it's so important just to keep them off guard, off balance, don't give them the same ball time after time. Couple of British coaches there, Mark Gellard and Ian Hughes, Gellard. that are looking after Lynette at the moment. Ian on the left of your picture there, Mark on the right. Went to the University of South Alabama, did Mark. He was uh, been in charge of Lynette a little bit longer than Ian has. He started his career, Mark, with uh, as a hitting partner with Hingis and Nadia Petrova. I know we've talked a lot about Sabalenka's forehand, but her backhand down the line was so effective yesterday against Vekic, and also from the middle of the court, going down the line, but off from the middle. It was a very effective shot. It's gorgeous tennis. So fluid. 30, 30. This is a match where both players are going to have to take their chances. Sabalenka a little more used to doing it, but Lynette, she has continued to rise to the occasion. Sabalenka's so good at holding that forehand just long enough to allow her opponent to move one way or the other, just to get a glimpse and makes that shot a lot more dependable as a winner. Good perseverance, good discipline in some of these rallies from Sabalenka and everything else around that. Pretty well. Sabalenka trying to get a bit of tension out of that racket. Sabalenka there just standing on her strings. That was uh, a way to try and get a little bit of tension out, th out of them, get them a little looser. Obviously feeling as though she's not getting the ball through the court as quickly as she would like. It's a bit unconventional, isn't it, Sam? <laughs> seen it done before but you know not everything needs to be so technical does it just <laughs> step on your racket a few times but a manual labor <laughs> There's so much more pressure when you're trying to come in and go into the Sabalinka forehand and that helped cause that miss from Lynette taking a couple of deep breaths another important game for her That's it. 
15. And we said this side wasn't Lynette's strength, but she goes for it, has been taking on the challenge, has that added belief in that forehand. And this former course from Lynette hasn't come totally out of the blue, has it? Billie Jean King Cup last year, of course, had some, a couple of great wins over Madison Keys there in three sets. And, of course, Karolina Pliskova there beat Pliskova comfortably 4-1 and one, heading into this season. Lynette talked a little bit about, you know, some of the struggles and feeling like her game was coming along. She was happy with her coaching team. She had to drop down at one point, play some lower level tournaments. And all for a purpose. And what a result here, a moment for her. Let's <laughs> Sabalenka has a terrific kick serve, and that serve just got a little out of Lynette's strike zone. Gave Sabalenka something a little shorter to attack. Fun half an hour. Both players pretty keen to get on with it on a chilly night here in Melbourne. Lynette serving a stay in this opening set.
net is using the pace from Sabalenka there beautifully. Stepped into that ball slightly and gave it a ride. Fold. This is going to be one of the interesting sort of uh, comparisons in terms of both these two players like to take the ball on the rise. Lynette may not be the biggest of hitter, but she takes the ball on the way up more often than she takes it on the way down. But was she going to get pushed back tonight? You can see there the tour average just under 50%. So both of them. going to try and stay up on that baseline just like in that rally terrific it's not easy to do Sam is it either when that ball's coming in as fast as it is from Sabalenka no you've got to be prepared to be low stay in your legs get the racket back fast especially in Sabalenka's case she does have very big swings on both sides so really important she sees it early and gets that preparation done in time to take that ball on Didn't quite get her feet in the right place there, Sabalenka. touched on of course is a bit of scar tissue of course for Sabalenka in the semi-finals of majors before games of course lost to Leila Fernandez didn't really have any opportunities but she was expected to win that one of course in 2021 she lost it 6-4 in the third I said she's lost all of them 6-4 in the third Pliskova semi-finals of Wimbledon she was a set and a break up set and 2-1 up against Pliskova before losing that one 6-4 in the third and of course recently against Iga at yeah, the US Open Back in September of last year, she was a breakup twice in the third set. Two love and 4 2 up against Schrontek. And Laura, you don't just travel with a suitcase of clothes, you travel with a suitcase of memories as a tennis player as well. They c it could be significant. Yeah, you never know, really. And that, that's what she's done th so well throughout the tournament, but also what Lynette's done well, because she was kind of known as someone who could get very nervous in big matches. Even when she was leading, you'd think, oh, there's always a chance, but how well has she got on, on top of things? Four. It's points like that that make me think maybe today is Sabalenka's day. That is a huge serve to come up with. 15 all, high pressure situation at 5 all. That's a big move. Let's. That's all.
net, trying to stay so low. She lost her footing. Fourteen hitting. Again, very big hitting from both players. Sabalenka loves finishing points with that forehand cross court. Again, Sabalenka. Well, you'd almost need a ticket to be able to return that. That had so much swing and angle on it. A little up and down and sort of right on the edge of making the tour finals and played some terrific matches towards the end. Some things fell her way. She got in uh, in Dallas and played terrific tennis, got to the final, really saw her game elevate. We kind of started forgetting about the double faults as well. And I think that was a big issue but it doesn't seem to be any longer. And it's just a different mindset uh, from Arena Sabalenka. Already has a title this year, and that always helps, you know, to make you feel a little more confident, relax you a little bit more. So it's been all Time. positive, I think. For a second time in this opening set of the second semi-final. Lynette serving to stay in it. Did a very neat job first time around. This is where the pressure builds. And, and Sam, I mean, you've just come off the tour. You've been experiencing this. I mean, you get to this stage, you've played this well, but serving to stay in a set, this is where it gets real. Fold. Fold. Lock it. Certainly some moments in a tennis match are far more important than others. And Chanda, you just said it. It is the pressure game here. Trying to stay, serve to stay in the set for the second time in a row. And it's her first double fold as well. So she's certainly starting to feel some pressure and perhaps some nerves. Tough a point there 15, from Lynette. 15. Big sigh of relief. But she's got to do it all over again here. Still a big point here, 15 30. Shows you the accuracy of the start of this match on the outside, significantly better than on the juice side, and it comes to a rescue once again there for Lynette. And the same combination, but this time with a serve into the body, produces a game point. Not easy to 40, think as clearly 40. as she's done there. No, this has been a very impressive last three points after first shot error and then the double fault. Now to recover like this obviously shows that she's very confident at the moment. Conviction to every stroke. Yes. 
Now, Lynette trying the change up, the low slice. It's a little short, but it was not a bad decision. And Sabalenka just confidently hitting through whatever pressure she may be feeling. Tennis. Advantage. Lynette. This was a very physical rally, and Lynette pushing herself to get up to that last ball, to get in position, close off the court. Well deserved point. Trying to get this service game. to coast and perfection applied for Lynette as well Six. off the backhand side. Game's all for set tiebreak. And after 45 minutes we're in an opening set breaker. Terrific hole to serve. Not easy when you don't get three points with your first serve as well. You may get them because your opponent overplays on the return but not because you're going to get many that take the racket out of your opponent's hand. That was superb. feel like it's a nice place to be if you're Sabalenka. There's just one way to play. You don't doubt yourself. See ball, hit it. Well, the pace can be overwhelming at times for even the best players out there. Of course, Sabalenka got through to the final of WTA by beating the top three players in the world. Bagula Jabour and, of course, Svantec. to ramp up in pace and also court positioning there from Sabalenka. Trying to seize this Sabalenka. moment. Such an advantage to the player who can take this first set. to see the class that she produced in Fort Worth with those three wins as well. It's not a, it's not a feat that happens that often, actually, since the turn of the century, just a, a couple of times as it happened before. Venus Williams did it in 2008, beating Safina Jankovic and Serena, and Serena herself <laughs> managed it in Miami, beating Hingis, her sister, and Capriati.
5-0. Can you play Sorry. tie break so far? Play it any better than this? This has been absolutely perfect tennis. <laughs> See ball, hit ball, do what you do best. And we're seeing that right now. She introduced another one to the line, and it's six straight points for Sabalenka in the tiebreak. This has been perfect, Laura. Even Lynette is shaking her head at how good it is. That ball landed on the very back of the line. I don't know how, yeah, as Chanda said, how, how do you play a better tiebreak than this? It just all seems like she's hitting the ball as if it's a watermelon. And you can understand the scores from their previous meetings right now, the way that Sabalenka is taking it to Lynette. Six straight set points for Sabalenka. I just love that she's gutted that she's missed one. And even that was pretty close. She, she can't believe it. just one set away so from a place in a major final the previous three she hasn't been able to get there can she tonight here in Melbourne Sabalenka takes the opener 7-6 It felt like, obviously, a more important set there for Lynette to try and contain Sabalenka Chanda. The, the freedom that you feel as though Sabalenka's going to have now to kind of swing like she just had is, uh, is there for her. Sabalenka is a front runner. It's never going to look like the right shot when you hit it that poorly, is it, Sam? Let's be honest. Yeah, it is easy to be critical of the decision when it doesn't quite get executed, but I actually don't mind the idea of her trying to bring Sabalenka forward, get her off that baseline, try and make her feel a little uncomfortable right now, but that execution does need to be a hell of a lot better. Yeah. No one ever saw a drop shot go in the net and say that was the right shot. <laughs> Even though it perhaps was the right shot, it just always looks like the wrong shot. Well, I think the absolute worst is missing it wide. Isn't that the cardinal sin? <laughs> Anything <laughs> else is okay. Yeah. 
Good deal. That serve from Lynette, not very fast, but Sabalenka still had to lunge for it, not quite picking it up. And Lynette has been mixing the placement of her serve up nicely. We always love to talk about pace and taking time away from opponents, but it is interesting how often some of the slower paced servers have pretty high numbers unreturned. I remember on the men's tour when Nishikori was healthy, how often you'd come off the end of a season and off his second serve, he'd have some of the highest unreturned second serve numbers because players would just try and get after it and try and hit it so hard consistently. From lap 30, she hauls herself over the finishing line. Agnesa Rabanska there looking off. Second. She's been down in Australia for a while, captain of Team Poland for the United Cup, playing in the Legends down here as well. Good times for Polish tennis at the moment as well. They won the Legends, she and, and Danny, so Poland is winning here. <laughs> I didn't think the Legends was an actual competition. Did you just There's a winner. They have a trophy and oh, everything. Really? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Seems rather generous. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of sprinting going on over on Magda's <laughs> side of the court. They played on Labour and it was on TV today. Oh, Come on. It must have been genuine. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Does that mean I can say I'm a two-time runner-up at Wimbledon? Is that on your resume? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking, hey, you just picked up the win here. <laughs> Can't You're defend against that kind of hitting. <laughs> just got to hope that you can be consistent enough and find some gaps of your own to unsettle Sabalenka. Oh, it's so difficult when you're that Thank far you. back in the court. She doesn't look like she just won a title today. Looks pretty fresh. When you're that far back in the court, you've got to get more height on your shot. And Sabalenka, just still a little too much of a line drive there. That's it, 15. Great serving. It's so effective for her. She's used it so well tonight, that wide serve sliding out. She both players have, to be fair. a few times if I recall Sam your, your kick serve was mean <laughs> but I'm curious what was Didn't your stuff you beating me though <laughs> well I, I don't know what the head-to-heads were and all that but I remember that serve and you know I'm curious what was your go-to serve and why I loved using the kicker mm -hmm. it always got the my opponents out of the court even if their backhand was their strength <laughs> Even if their backhand was their strength, I loved using it and it get a ball up high on a backhand, even if it is your strength, it's still a tough shot and then I could set myself up for the forehand. So go to definitely kick a backhand forehand. I remember that play <laughs> and my backhand wasn't my strength. So I guess that's why I got so many of them. <laughs> She's 
had a biomechanics trainer, hasn't she, for this serve? She's modified it. She talked a little bit about it at the US Open last year. I think she actually forgot his name at that particular juncture in New York, but she credited him a, a few days ago. And it is an interesting mindset that she said. She said, I thought it was my mentality around my second serve, but actually, after working with him, I realized it was something to do with my technique rather than my mind. And it is probably instructional for a lot of players out there who feel as though they're nervous about a shot. that they potentially can go and find somebody else. Not every coach or a coach that's looking Love after you can know everything about everything. No, absolutely. And I think I actually saw her out there. I believe his name was Ben Kibler. Yep. Uh, he was out on the practice courts at Cincinnati. They were out there for hours one afternoon, serving and serving and serving. I don't know what they were talking about, but whatever it was, it obviously worked. I think some of it has got to be a bit of a mental standpoint then as well. Once you are struggling with a particular shot, especially the surf, because it's, it's the one shot that you have full control over. But sometimes that can actually be hard to tweak if you then start thinking more technically and if it works for you and that clicks, whatever the remedy, that's all that matters. So and do you think sometimes it can start as a mental issue and then you start trying to self-correct and you start doing some weird things and you don't even realize it I in terms so, of your yeah. technique. The body's amazing, isn't it? The body and the mind sometimes gets disjointed and then they don't work together so well and so naturally. Oh. question on the kick serve because you had a great kick so serve you played against some great kick serves Serena uh, you know to name one how do you rate Sabalenka's kick serve yeah it's good I think uh, again when it's on I think sometimes yeah, obviously we've just been talking about some of the issues she's got to have full belief in it and I think that's really important I think sometimes when she's not quite fully trusting it turns into a bit more of a slice maybe a hybrid type serve Food. But when it's on and she can get it really going through the court and not sliding into her opponent, it's tough to handle. Thirteen. Fourteen. It can be so hard to defend against the style that Sabalenka brings. I mean, you do it for a certain period, but it just can start to wear on you. The physicality, having to constantly defend. Lynette under additional pressure here. Ah! Huge amounts of effort lose. going into that particular fully in control as she was in the Wimbledon semi-final back in 2021 against Pliskova. Same score line up a set and 2-1 with the break. Fifteen. Starting to see Lynette in her rear view mirror at the moment. Laura, is there anything you can see courtside that Lynette possibly could do here? But to me, it looks like she's just starting to pull off her forehand. A lot of shots where she's starting and landing on that outside leg, moving back as she's still in the motion. She's just got to keep forcing herself to stay on that shot. It's been such a strength that she's managed to turn around in her game over the last couple of weeks. But I just think she feels so under pressure, as the, as the girls have been saying up there. How, how do you control this pace for such a long time?
the right shot. Four ticket in. Would have been a winner had she managed to guide it over the net. I'd maybe start covering the wide serve on the G side a little more if I was Lynette, just lean into that a little, a little bit more for Sabalenka to go for the lower percentage one down the tee. It feels like Sabalenka's going there a lot, to be honest, the wide one. So desperate to find the back outside. Jason Stacey there in the black t-shirt, her physio trainer. Sabalenka leads. Andre three on the left of your picture there. Hits her and coach as well. And randomly Pat Cash, a couple of rows up there. Also has a data at guy here as well. There is Pat. the data analyst as well for Sabalenka you would actually think the way Sabalenka plays that she probably wouldn't invest maybe money and time in that but of course here at the Aussie Open the first time that those types of people have got credentialed which is great to see and also great to see that she is taking that sort of thing as seriously as she is Fold. coaches have we access to that data here and you know Sam you've kind of seen some of the changes how do you feel data comes into play for you if at all yeah we, we've used it a lot at Tennis Australia for a long time we've had a the own our own department that we can always tap into and ask for different things and some of it you can use really effectively some can just blow your mind and you think what am I gonna do with that information but I guess that's all about then the coach dissecting it and being able to use it to the players advantage but now there is just so much out there that you can find and gather and use and the technology is just going gangbusters. It's incredible what you can find these days with all the cameras on court and the speed cameras and everything. And it's obviously helping Sabalenka a lot. Super volley. Fifteen. Well, that may be a place you'd like to be up at a little bit more, Lynette, but not easy to do when Sabalenka is drilling the ball as fast as she is at you. out and constructed engineered I'm going to celebrate another famous victory but it's been tough just wanted to show you this we talk about how big Sabalenka's hitting the ball look how big she went in the tiebreaker in the opening set as well I mean virtually up 10 K's on both forehand and backhand she still has that in reserve I mean it really felt like she was going bigger from our position so I can imagine what Lynette was feeling down there I mean just elevate it and what do you do when you don't have a big weapon. Yeah. 
15. have a career like mine. <laughs> Or hope for a few more misses from Sapolinka. <laughs> well, this is still a step into the unknown, and we shouldn't forget that for Sabalenka. Things could still get interesting. 15, 14. Maybe those couple of misses from Sabalenka, the previous points, just gave Lynette a little something to grab hold of. He's got just a little more positive energy here. Fold. It looked to me like Sabalenka thought the second serve was going long. Just how she pulled off that one. She sort of resigned herself to the fact that it was point over. She'd been making that forehand for much, really yes. all of the first set, going to the beginning of this one, but just a little off there. And that could be huge. Yeah, how hard is it to go for a shot you just miss and literally the next point to go after it again? Yes. Well, the benefit, of course, has been on the second serve for Sabalenka that there's been less double faults. But, of course, it takes a bit of pressure off your first serve as well if you trust your second serve more. And there's more opportunities for that type of serve to happen. Just a second ace of the set. <laughs> Something that was celebrated by everyone. Stoza S. I would have gone for the off. <laughs> <laughs> what a shot. Again, and 
again, we see the growth from Sabalenka in terms of those big moments and the way she's able to navigate them now. Sabalenka leads five games to one. And there is the difference tonight as well for Sabalenka. She has an above average pace on that forehand and spin and width and everything else that goes with it compared to the tour at the bottom there. Lynette, of course, below average, which once again just uh, really does highlight how well Lynette has played in this tournament to get through to the last four. It's been a fabulous adventure and journey for Lynette, but it does look as though it's coming to its conclusion. Fold. Really the first time in this whole match, Lynette's starting to look a little dejected. Is it all slipping away? Is it all getting a bit too hard? She's really got a fight to stay in this match here. And it's Coach Ian Hughes, Sabalenka's entourage. from Lynette, but superior firepower from Sabalenka brings up two match points. 15, 14. She only knows one way. But it is a way that seemingly will send her through to the final of the Australian Open. Jean King. I was just thinking about the fact that pressure is a privilege and it's got to be what 
Sabalenka is feeling right now, trying to get to her first major final. the original nine and there's the unique one and that is arena sabalenka once again one shot away from being in the final of the australian open this moment like for you in Roland Garros 2010 that was the first time you got through a semi to a final uh, yeah a little nerve-wracking but I played um, probably one of the best matches of my career against against Yelena Yankovic and you're just in the zone you just want to get it done as quickly as possible when you get to this position Fold. If you're Lynette here, you're I just doing do everything it. to try and make Sabalenka serve for it because no matter what she's in, improved, worked on over the last six months, there's always going to be that baggage of what the serve was looking like this time last year. Yep, can she scramble to safety? Can she inject a little more tension in this match? Did a great job of keeping it close in the opening set. Oh. Yes, she can. Yes. A rousing reception from the crowd, from a box. And she keeps her slender hopes alive here in Melbourne, does Magda Lynette. Could be interesting. 5-2, Sabalenka. Fold. And that's bad luck for Lynette. I mean, that first point is so crucial and it's allows Sabalenka to take a deep breath, having won that point by the slimmest of margins. Certainly could give us a good insight Fifteen. into the final as well in how she's going to handle that if she gets into a, a winning position. That's unplayable though. Big after hitting the double fault. It's only the second one for the match to go after that first serve again, 181, and then a massive forehand. Still trying to bring out her best tennis every single point here. Yeah. 
Kills you. And you can just see the tension that has crept into Sabalenka's game. A very nervous forehand halfway up the net. And she has been so fluid off of that side. Serve out wide, or does she go back quick through the tee? Massive serve. Went back where she had good rhythm. I believe that's the quickest of the Ponte, night as well Ponte. for Sabalenka. Didn't want to have to go through the rigors of hitting a ground stroke. Fourth match point, first time on her serve. moves through to a maiden major final. And at the fourth time of asking as well, three times she'd been in that situation before, just to set away. This time, she takes that huge step. Yeah, that was a great performance there by Sabalenka from aside from those first couple of games of the match, she really hit her stride, hit the ball big, hit it powerful, did what she did best. 